So in this video, we're going to talk about the process of breaking in an engine. So you've got yourself a new car that's never, ever been driven before, brand new engine. How should you drive it? The way you drive a new engine or an engine that has been completely stripped down and rebuilt will have a dramatic effect on how it performs over its lifespan. If you get the break-in process wrong, it can prevent the engine from achieving its power or it can affect long-term reliability. But there are so many different schools of thought out there. So this video really just highlights what goes on during the break-in process and the different strategies and different schools of thought regarding breaking in an engine. So engines need to be broken in to allow components within the engine to properly seat and seal. The piston rings need to form a good seal between the piston and the wall of the cylinder. The cylinder wall surface won't be perfect. So the piston rings need to bed in to that surface. So it's working under a lot of pressure within the engine with the piston, the explosions going on in the engine, forcing everything together. And you've got various heat cycles going on where the metals are contracting and expanding. So the braking process will allow those pistons to seat properly. So if they don't seat properly, you will start to get blow by problems where some of the power is escaping down the sides of the pistons into the crank case and that will mean you're down on power and that will also have detrimental consequences for the oil seals, the oil quality and other components within the engine. So the cylinder walls are generally rough when you first get the engine. They've been honed or roughed up or a hash pattern has been cut on those cylinder walls just to allow the bedding in with the piston rings to take place more effectively. Now a lot goes on in this area, a lot of stress and a lot of pressure and a lot of friction is caused. So those cylinder walls need to become fairly smooth and nicely conform with whatever happens to those piston rings in order to maximize the lubrication and reduce the friction that goes on. So it's a balance between enough space for the lubrication to happen, not enough of a gap for the blow by problems, and also not enough of a gap to start having friction issues where there's hot spots or the oil is starting to shear away and you're getting excessive wear on those areas. So the engine bearings, the crankshaft bearings, the rod bearings, they're under a lot of stress and a lot of pressure within the engine itself. So they need a little bit of time just to smooth themselves off for everything to just bed in and start working effectively. If they don't have the correct clearance, you'll have problems with friction. You might end up with crank walk or other serious detrimental issues going on within the engine. And also you've got all of the gaskets and the seals. So when everything's new, there's going to be microscopic gaps between the sealed parts. So the braking process, the heat cycling, the pressures of the combustion going on inside the engine will all help everything to bed in. In some cases, people have to retighten things or things are checked at that critical first service. And it's very common for you to need to change the oil fairly quickly after the engine has just been run for the first time because a lot of those metal components have been shed and they're now in the engine oil and they're going to become a problem to the lifespan of the car. And I've heard issues with manufacturers using the wrong grade of oil that's providing too much lubrication and preventing the bedding process from happening. There was a range of uh, Rover 1.8 VVC engine, but they never really bedded in properly just because they had chosen the wrong spec of oil at the factory for that initial breaking process. So your choice of oil is quite critical just to make sure that everything happens. You want a bit of friction, not too much friction, and you certainly don't want to be stressing everything too hard. So some people speak about the fast braking method where you drive the engine really hard at high RPMs. I certainly wouldn't recommend that. You're putting a lot of extra stress on the seals if the piston rings haven't properly bedded in. Those blow by gases are going to be causing excessive pressures within the crankcase and you're going to start having oil leaks appearing all over the engine. But for some engines, if the manufacturer or the builder of that engine engine says you need to do a fast braking method, then follow their instructions. So part of the mantra really in this entire video is to follow the instructions of the people that made the engine. They will best understand what needs to happen in order to get everything to bed in properly. So the fast braking method requires the use of high RPM driving, high loads on the engine, 
And a lot of people argue that this fast braking method is more likely to cause long term damage and problems. So for most people, it's best avoided. So again, with the slow braking method or the regular braking method, what you're trying to do is not stress the engine. So driving at too lower RPM or at too high an RPM will add extra stress to the engine. So you want the engine to be working relatively hard, but at fairly low RPMs. So you might choose to do a lot of hill work in those mid gear and mid RPM ranges. One of the key things really in this braking period is to vary things, not just to sit on a motorway or a highway at a set RPM. That's not going to break in the engine or put those stresses through those components that actually need to be bedded in. So you need to vary the load, you need to vary the RPM, but do it gradually in a controlled way. Avoid those sudden throttle inputs. Make sure the engine is properly warmed up and it will certainly make sense not to run the engine cold for extended periods of time lots of short journeys will not really help that bedding process so look to get that first few thousand miles done in a fairly concentrated window with lots of varied rpm driving at various different loads so most drivers will actually start off relatively conservatively so they'd be at the lower third of the rpm range and then as they start clocking up the miles and things have started to bed in they start to explore the mid part of the third of the RPM range. So you'd gradually start to increase the RPM and the load just to further extend the braking. But you must consult with whoever built the engine or the manufacturer and what their recommendations are because they will understand what components have gone into the engine, which metals have been used and what braking method would best assist the engine to achieve its long-term potential and long-term goals. You do need to be patient, give this process time. You also need to fastidiously check levels. So check the oil levels, check the coolant levels. Just make sure that you're not getting hot spots. The temperature of the engine is not starting to run away. With a new engine that's just been assembled, it's unlikely that you'll have inherent problems and weaknesses in the engine, but there's always a chance you'll have a defective one off the production line. So keep a very close eye on things when the engine is brand new and establish a baseline of what is normal because that will help you to determine long term whether there's an issue developing with the car that you need to get addressed. And the critical thing, as I'm always saying in my videos, is your choice of oil the grade, the formulation, the components in it, and which specifications it meets. Make sure that you're with the manufacturer's recommendations when it comes to that. And buying cheap oil after that braking process has happened or toward the end of the braking process can certainly be detrimental. I've heard some people say that you need those cheap oils or lower grades of oil during the braking process. But again, if you get that wrong, you can cause yourself problems further down the line. So always take advice from people that built the engine. There is no no one braking method that works for all engines. There's so many different types of engine out there. There's so many different types of braking that needs to be done. Whether you've just had the pistons and piston rings changed, you've had the whole block honed and bored out, or you've got some more extensive modifications that have happened to the engine. So you really must consult with a person who knows best, and that's generally the guy who built it or who designed it. So I hope this video has just answered some of the common misconceptions when it comes to breaking in an engine. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. Subscribe to the channel. We'd hate you to miss out on the great content we've got planned over the upcoming months through this year. And we would love you to stay tuned. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video that I've lined up for you.